<laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the second Storm Franklin Stormwater uh, Division Utility Discussion. We are here with um, Glenn Jones, my fellow counselor. He was on the ad hoc committee, and a town administrator, Jamie Helen, along with um, Brutus Cantoreggi. Yes. Well, everybody calls him Brutus, but I like to call him Department Director yeah. Robert. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Kate Schoberg, she is our GIS analyst and expert at all mapping. And we have a um, expert in, in our consulting, consulting, consulting expert out in the audience. Her name is Jean Haggerty, so she'll be able to answer other questions that, um, that we can't, maybe about yep. regional and national things that go on. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, we did meet again, we, we, we met before on Friday <laughs> last week, and we we came up with some extra additional slides and information, which was really great. Um, there, there are a uh, quick facts and takeaways that everybody should have, and we people should be able to take, get this off of the website, right? And we have a pros and cons listing. Do we? Not on the website. Not on the website, it's the but it's in the in the presentation. So, um, with that, I think we will kick it off to Brutus so he can start. And if anybody has a question, just raise their hand and we'll stop and um, continue on. We just want to kind of have a casual conversation about what's happening and everybody to feel comfortable <coughs> being here, okay? All right, you ready? I think ready? so, thank okay. you. All right. Just remind folks that this is the second, we're going to be doing a third at the Franklin right. Library yes. next. March um, 21st from yeah. 11 at the Franklin Public Library and the Friends of the Franklin Library uh, community room. Yes, because yes, we're trying to hit a different time where different folk get out to get this information. Right. Right. And also we forgot the expert, Oh, Ben oh. Franklin. And Ben's here, here, right? Ben's here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Come you and know. meet Ben, I know, yeah. did, especially on Saturday. Exactly. Right? Come and meet Ben. So once again, I'm Brutus Kinnereggi. I'm the DPW Director uh, for the Town of Franklin. And um, give a little presentation, the overall uh, idea behind a stormwater or our division utility. So... It's basically we're out here just to uh, educate the folks again at home. I've been talking uh, stormwater for uh, as long as I've been here, 13, 14 years. Um, it's a very important we're doing to get this out there. And the thing everybody needs to know is it's basically it's an unfunded mandate yep. that has come down from uh, the federal government and through the state and down to us. And we, based on the permit that we got, this is our permit. If anybody wants to look at it, we tried to upload it on the website, but there's not enough memory on there. But if you actually want to look at the hard copy, come see. down and look at it. It's an excellent way. Mm -hmm. But that's our permit that we have oh, to go through. It's, a, it's huge. And that's what we work on. And every <laughs> town, um, particularly with this MS4 permit, Franklin has specific criteria based upon the, um, the Charles River watershed that we're a part of with other communities. So there's extra stuff that we have to do. Um, you can get additional information on the town website, which uh, Kate has set up. Um, it's on uh, Franklin Gov Stormwater Division, and it, we're here to discuss the overall uh, enterprise fund. Um, an ad hoc committee was set up by the council to go over this. Um, council Hamlin is the chair, obviously. Um, council Earls, who couldn't be here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, council Delorco is also uh, available. I think he's probably he, stuck in traffic. Yeah, he works in Boston. <coughs> yeah. And <laughs> Council Jones flew in just to be here today. Absolutely. <laughs> he's a little tired, but we're here. <laughs> So one thing I always like to talk about, if you've seen my presentations in the past, is that Franklin is, um, is, is unique. And the one thing I've tried to sell uh, the programs that we do is, um, is we take a basically what's called a triadic approach. We don't just look at um, drinking water, and everybody knows Franklin has uh, drinking water um, that goes on town, comes from the groundwater. We also look at wastewater, which would be our sewer system. And then finally, um, we deal with stormwater. We look at all three together because they they all work. They're all part of the water system. Uh, Council DeLorco, oh, thank I, you. He made it. He did, man. Join us. <laughs> we were right. You were in traffic. Yeah, well, was. <laughs> we just missed your intro, but yeah, it was excellent. You read it on the oh, yeah. oh, good. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So this is something we've been doing at Franklin for a long time, is look at what we call a triadic approach, and we look at all the water in town, and um, that's what we try to do. So stormwater, what is stormwater, if you don't know? It's uh, water that um, originating from uh, events of a rain, snow, or ice melt. And what it does is it, it falls. It falls from the sky or it rolls off. And the problem that can happen, it picks up pollution. 
So that pollution could be the oils on the road. It could pick up the salts. It could, could pick up the sands, particularly the sands of um, the, uh, the particles. The easiest thing for people to think of is cars always dropping off um, uh, antifreeze and stuff like that. That stuff becomes attached to like a, a small piece of dirt, as you'd want to say it. And that will get moved by the water down to storm drain. Eventually, that can end up into the, into the stream bed of the, of the river. So um, that's one of the things we have to protect. But also goes along with that, as you know, as Franklin's a drinking water town, what we like to do is we like to capture the water in Franklin, and we want to keep it in Franklin. I've always said that because, as you know, we have a, a water conservation plan every year. Not a ban, but a conservation plan. We did have to go with a ban if it's bad. But we still, and that's once again permitted by the state. That's not something that we or the council choose to do. We're required to do these measures. But the idea is we want to capture all the storm water that falls in town, and we want to keep it in Franklin. Mm -hmm. Every gallon of water that stays in Franklin is good for us, good for us yes. community. If it goes down the Mine Brook, it goes down the Charles River, and ends up Boston Harbor, it ain't helping us. Nope. Okay, so let's keep it here. And stormwater and this management system is one way to do that. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> ben is sleeping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I kind of touched on the groundwater recharge is a critical point to remember for stormwater. And as I said, uh, frankly, gets all its drinking water from the groundwater. So in the permit, one of the things, there are um, MS4 permits. And how many do we have? How many, how many Gene, MS4 permits in Massachusetts? It's 200? About 200. There's about 200. And they're based, they're based upon like population density areas. So but, that's, um, I, that's 200 separate towns across Massachusetts that yes. have a yes. permit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to Similar clarify. to us, but we are a little stricter because of the phosphorus loading issue in the Charles River. So all communities that feed into the Charles River, there's part of that permit that actually addresses that. And that's part of uh, one of the parts that's very expensive that Franklin has to deal with. So the municipal, uh, if anybody wants MS4, you've heard that acronym before, that's Municipal mm -hmm. Separate Storm Water Sewer System. That's what they call it, that's EPA. <laughs> so it was originally part of the, the Clean Water Act. Um, 1973. Yep, and that's what it uh, you know, cleaned up. And the Clean Water Act, is, as you know, has done, a, has done a wonderful job for cleaning up our rivers yes. and um, our harbors. And as you know, you can hear the stories is uh, love that dirty water in Boston because yes. you know now everybody wants to be on the Charles River, but if you go back to the 60s and 70s, no one wanted to be near it because it stunk. Yes, and the tide would come I, in it, and out. It did. So uh, I, I know I know that for a fact, Brutus, because I grew up two blocks from it. Okay. In the <clears throat> Watertown Dam side of things, mm -hmm. and I will tell you, as as a young kid growing up next to the Charles River, besides seeing some of the rodents that used to populate the edge of the river, you could actually see the phosphorus and the chemicals that were being dumped into the river at the time in the early 1970s. So these efforts from the 1970 the 1973 Clean Water Act. Um, a lot of these mandates originated not only just a long time ago, but on the other end of the Charles and have worked their way up towards our side of the river, whereas we are the discharges into the river now. And yes, for the most part, the river on the Cambridge Watertown side has improved, but it is their ultimate goal to get it to, I think, a level four mm -hmm. river. It is Sw swimmable at times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'd care to swim in it right now yet. <laughs> but I do like their lofty goal to get it there. It's cold. Yeah. I think we'll be yeah. talking more about the Watertown Dam, actually. Yes, a little bit. <clears throat> yes, right. You, you know, and, and how this permit actually, um, <clears throat> the science behind of it and the data that we're using today is based off tests done at the Watertown Dam. So yes. we'll, I think right. we're getting into that a little bit later uh, in the presentation. Do you want me to take that permit? It's heavy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We can put it in Try front. Try balancing it on your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so once again, it, the MS4 established, in, or it's part of the, the Clean Water Act, and as things progressed, just like Title V did. In the 90s, they came up with the original MS4 permit, which was medium large cities. So you think of Boston and Cambridge mm -hmm. and what they had, they had to deal with um, to comply with the permit. And that was the Boston Harbor cleanup, the Deer Island. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we have time to go through all that. And the Charles River Columbia pollution. Then later on, well, actually in 99, they they went to the smaller communities, the small MS4 communities. And uh, there's statistics, there's 6,695 small MS4 per communities across the U.S. and there's over 200 in Massachusetts. And that's basically they have a separate storm sewer system, which what we have, a uh, population of less than 100,000 and located in a Census Bureau designated urbanized area. Basically, which means it has to be a dense area for um, mm -hmm. the 
they have to work through. So even like smaller communities like in Massachusetts, um, if you look at like the Medfields, the um, Millis, uh, Bellingham, they're all tied into this because as a group, they're brought into it, even though they're, they're that small, but they have to deal with it. Because they're dense, the population is well, dense. Well, they're a little spread out, but they're just, they're so small, but mm -hmm. because they're part of a bigger unit, they look at it as a, an area that goes out. So they're, they're, they, those towns are actually connected? Correct. In the permit? Yes. Okay. So if you look at, this is a map, um, as you can see, the phase one and phase two, the uh, the density areas of where they're at. And obviously on the um, New England down to Washington, D.C., Chesapeake Bay area is very huge. It's a very urbanized area, um, L.A., L.A. County, up by San Francisco, Seattle, and obviously down in Florida. But all the bigger cities, they have it. But there's a lot of parts of the country you see are white. They don't have they don't have to deal with this like like we do. So what have we already done about MS4 and Stonewall and Franklin? Um, we offered solutions, invested locally, and pushed back. Um, we went after low-hanging fruit. Um, this is one that I, I kind of did a while ago, but it was um, with my, my background in agronomy. Phosphorus is a big problem that the EPA is going after now. Mm -hmm. And so we worked with our state reps at the time. We were able to ban phosphorus in a lawn fertilizer. And what they do, all this stuff that we do is giving credits to the different towns across the community. So EPA granted all the towns. At the time, I think we were 60-something percent. They reduced everybody down to like 50-something percent. So we got 10 percent credit. Saved millions of dollars across the state. And that was just to get fertile, just to get phosphorus fertilized, phosphorus out of lawn fertilizer. Yes. So, so the permit said that we had to reduce phosphorus by 60 percent. 60, I forget. 62. So that's a, that's a huge amount, right? So we did. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then because of this phosphorus fertilizer ban that you came you did, then so we got credit. So then we only had to reduce by fifty percent. Fifty something, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I think Those are, it's fifty sometimes something. Sometimes it gets kind of confusing yes. when you because you understand it and. Yeah, and, and the whole thing that we say is like low hanging fruit. When I say it's low hanging fruit, it's easy to do and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Right. Right. You know, you know, if you think about it on the opposite end, if we have to put in a big retention pond or we have to build a plant to get rid of phosphorus, that costs millions of dollars. This really didn't cost us anything. It was just going after doing the right thing. And there's a lot of different options that we can do out there mm -hmm. to reduce the overall phosphorus. And that's what, you know, my job is, Gene's job is, Kate, we can find the best bang for the buck to do it. So obviously in NM Franklin, um, I was able to, uh, my team was able to secure grants over a million dollars, done a lot of stormwater stuff in town, which you gotta understand, that's a lot of uh, grants for a town in the community this size. Um, some of the ones that are very highly visible is you know right over here at Fletcher Field, you see these rain gardens here. Up in Parmenter, we built the rain mm -hmm. gardens, we catch all the mm -hmm. water off the roof, we mm -hmm. treat it, mm -hmm. we ground charge it. The sculpture park over on Panther Way, that was that initially started out as a 319 grant, those big mm -hmm. four bays. So that was paid for by the federal government through uh, in kind service by the Franklin Public Works, and the, you know the guys did a lot of work on those mm -hmm. too. And that's mm -hmm. when I say in kind services, so they they pay 60 percent, we got to do 40. So like the Franklin DPW crews would go went down and did a lot of that work. So that was our part of building mm -hmm. these different things. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the council uh, passed you know strong local bylaws in town basically saying in layman's terms, any new development that comes in town, they have to capture the first inch of rain that falls in a 24 hour period, has to be recharged into, into, into the ground on site. So that's that's our um, our bylaws. The other thing we've done throughout town is our road narrowing sidewalk you know, removal program. Row, we look at different roads that, um, that are very wide. So like last year, we just have to do a water line, but we did um, a skyline. I think people can remember that it was like 36 mm -hmm. feet wide. We don't need 36 five wide roads, and they're expensive to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So we look at it as, okay, if we reduce the road down, um, it's less cost to construct it, and plus, there's less future maintenance of the road. If you think about it, it's less plowing, less salting, less crack sealing, less chip sealing, less overlay going through the future. Plus, all that money we save there, we can use in other town roads to improve them. Um, additionally, we get credit with this permit because we reduce the impervious area there. So what we have to, our overall number, we bring it down. So it's like... That's one of the things we try to tie everything in together, and it works out really well. Um, we've invested in you know our award-winning programs. We have different things. We get a lot of awards about our rain gardens. I think everybody seen some of our rain gardens around town. Hopefully, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a public education thing, but they work out really well. 
Um, we've worked with other towns. Um, I've worked with Bellingham, Milford, Medway. Who else we've done? Bellingham. Right. Yeah, huh? it, Bellingham. Bellingham? Yep. Yeah, so we work with them quite sharing grants, trying to try research, research. It's a lot of public outreach, education like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked with environmental groups. We've worked with Charles River Watershed. Um, some people say, why do you work with Charles River Watershed? You know, the, 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 they're the ones that they're very, very, um, we don't always agree. <laughs> Put it to you that way. They want to be over here. I got to be over here. They don't realize costs. So, but you know what? They're good people there, and they do come up with some good ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, actually a lot of the work that was done over here was a grant through them. They came up with a lot of these ideas. Like, even, like, uh, Right across the over here. Yeah, oh, Fletcher. yeah, yeah. People don't know where you are. I know where we're at. We're, we're on Hutchinson Street. Yeah. Right. But, but we're Hutchinson yes. Street, but when you point over there. Like the Parment or Fletcher, Fletcher Field. Fields. Oh, okay. Even um, <clears throat> Cottage Sports Street Fields. Extension. Yeah. Remember how we narrowed that out? We put the we, we were able to do the flooding control over there, and we were able to. That was that was part of their ideas. They yeah. paid for the grant in design. So it, it works good with them. And then I also uh, say a tongue in cheek, um, you know, the military. It's, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies close. Yeah. So you know what's going on. And we, we share a lot of different information, so it works out well. And, um, you know, the town, I think we all have, I think we're known, we're, we've testified. I've testified and testified and testified. Every time a permit comes up, I go ask questions. I, you know, I hold things up. Um, we do that. The town of Franklin, we appealed and we sued the federal government. I mean, it's a big deal. So this mm -hmm. permit, it's not like you can, you, when you appeal it, you can't do it at the state level. You have to go to the federal government. Mm -hmm. And we had to do this. Yeah. And originally, if we had filed in originally New York City, and but it was taken down to D.C. because the National Home Builders also, they filed before we, our group, did. So, um, you know, we sued them. So it's a tough process. It went through mitigation. And you had you had the builders and the environmentalists, and you guys all, all got together, right? Well, kind of. So <laughs> that's no, what the slide says, Bruce. <laughs> huh? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> then we all work. <laughs> they all work no, together. No, the town of Franklin <laughs> sued EPA. So the town of Franklin was yeah. a lead plaintiff yeah. with Lowell yes. Conservation Law, right. Charles River Watershed, and Home Builders. Right. We were the lead plaintiffs for all the communities in Massachusetts, but so like Conservation Law, we weren't fighting for the same thing. They thought the permit wasn't strict enough. They thought the permit should be done quicker. Okay, they had what they wanted. We, on the other hand, said the permit cost too much money and we wanted more time. Yes. Right. And then the home builders, obviously, they look at the costs associated with this as, you know, future development. So they had their type of agenda. Yeah. But so these were all different plaintiffs suing um, okay. EPA and the federal government. Um, Franklin was chosen. It was um, a bunch of communities and we were chosen to, um, they needed someone to take the lead on it. They chose us because of all the, 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 the good stuff that we had done in uh, Franklin. And it's, um, I always make the joke, uh, well, not joke, it's a statement with EPA. On one hand, they give us awards, say, so you, gee, you're doing a wonderful job. So that gives us a good right to push back on them. You can't give me an mm -hmm. award in one hand and a fine on the other. It makes no sense. Right. So that's why Franklin was chosen, and that's mm -hmm. why I want to do it. Um, the Townsend Federal Court, EPA, there's mediation for several years. Um, very little cost to the town, it was $10,000. Um, outcomes, we were su successful. We delayed the permit for quite a while. And I think as everybody knows, time is money. Mm. So we were able to delay it for a while. Um, we were, the big thing for us, we were able to ne renegotiate the timeline for the phosphorus reduction. So a lot of stuff was going to take place in year 10 of this permit. And it was supposed to be done within 10 years. This is just, the permit's big, but I'm just trying to give it layman's terms. So what's in the, the permit that's been proposed now that's not official yet is basically we call it's like an off ramp. So we can go to EPA and say, you know what, this is what we're doing. This is our plan. But you know what? You guys are crazy. We can't do it in 10 years. It's going to take us 20 years. Or we're going to spend this much money, so much years. It could be 30 years. And we come up, we, we work with EPA to get um, an agreement that's good for them and good for us. Um, EPA has been pretty good about that. You know, if you're if you're making progress and you're doing things, they tend to work with you. It's when you don't do anything, mm -hmm. they get yeah. very angry and they show <laughs> up with their lawyers and they find you. So, but this this should be a good thing for us. Um, the other big thing for Franklin is um, we were able to get credit for uh, work completed under the extended permit. So mm -hmm. the original permit ran out in uh, 2009, right? Mm -hmm. Eight, eight, I'm sorry. So any work that we had done, all these impervious reductions in an impervious area, we're going to get credit for. So it's not like it started 
in 2019. We missed that 10 year gap. All these great things we did in Franklin, we're going to get credit for mm -hmm. that overall reduction <clears throat> of phosphorus. All right, that's good. Um, and all these outcomes save taxpayers additional money over the life of the permit. I mean, mm -hmm. time is money, and we've done it already, and uh, so it's good. Does anybody have any questions about that? No, Comments? I have one question, and just to clarify, because I think. <laughs> I think a lot of the people, uh, a lot of townspeople don't understand the difference between stormwater and sewer. Where does our stormwater go? Where does the sewer go? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they go to the same place. Okay. They kind of do. The Charles River. <laughs> <laughs> so our sewer one clean one Yeah, that's true. So our, in our overall in our sewer system, we have about 140 something miles of sewer system. So we collect all the sewer and that goes what's called the Charles River Pollution Control District. It's a plant in Medway that's on the Charles River and it treats all the sewer. And Franklin, for argument's sakes, we control 80% of that. So other communities that use it is, are, is Medway, Bellingham, Millis, and then even towns like Dover and mm -hmm. Sherburne, they can haul the stuff they take out of the septics over there, so they're treated. But we have the controlling interest there. Um, so that's all treated. Our stormwater, which is separate, that's what we call the separate system, it, um, it goes to various places throughout town. It goes to some of the four bays, it can go into the Mine Brook, the, all the other- The Charles River. The Charles River, and, and that's where it's dumped in. And the treatment, so if you think of a big plant like the, the sewer, that's obviously processed and everything else, this stuff, we do kind of process it. We're, we're trying to um, slow it down. I mean, you look at a permit picture right there, I think of, that's over at the, the sculpture park. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, that water comes out there, the pipes, it sits there for a while and is allowed to go back in the ground. So phosphorus, and I'm the right time to say, <laughs> the best way to get rid of phosphorus is to put it in the ground. Right. The earth is the best filter in the world. Right. So it captures that phosphorus. So instead of going you know, down the pipe, dumping right into the Charles River, it gets caught in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so in that groundwater is once again good for us. So that's, that's why this is a good system for us. Mm -hmm. right. Did that answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody so, else on what we just were talking about? I mean, I mean Bruce, we cannot catch everything. There's no way we can catch everything. No. no. I think that's a good point to make is that not everything goes into a four bay like this. Because over at, the, at Logan, we, we, we can stop a lot of stuff. We have the balloons, we have that big, we have everything stopped and everything. But we're dumping a lot of de-icer into the Atlantic Ocean and mm -hmm. there's no way to stop it. Mm -hmm. So I just want, want to let everybody know that we're going to stop what we can, but I mean, it's mm -hmm. not like stuff's not going to get in Perfect. there. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> It, it, and to your point, which the town, which frustrates me, is that these phosphorus levels that we have to remove as a town, we have to make up more because other people can't. Right. Particularly like in the, in the case of the, the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act, like farms are exempt. They don't have to have anything so they can, their agricultural runoff can go into the Charles River. So if they're putting a ton of phosphorus in because they're growing potatoes, mm -hmm. and that's going to Charles River and getting tested at the Watertown Dam, we have to <laughs> we have to pick it up. The same thing is the, the, the sewer, believe it or not, the sewer that goes in there, there's phosphorus. Mm -hmm. There's phosphorus. Can I say the word poopies? You know. Yeah, I know. The water, the water is cleaner. The water is cleaner coming out of the sewer. Uh, the plant oh, yeah. is actually in the river, if you can believe that. There's better water coming out of the plant that's actually in the river because mm -hmm. we have to make it up, and that's part of the cost burden right. that's associated with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So true. it's a tough thing to do. So anyways, um, Franklin, as you can see, the miles, and basically the infrastructure system is a $175 million system. So it's maintenance needs. It's like anything else. If you buy a car, you don't take care of it, you know, it's only going to last so long, it's going to bust. It's going to cost you a lot of money to fix it. If you maintain it as you go along, you change the oil, keep air in the tires, do that, it lasts a whole lot longer. So that's part of what this this is going mm -hmm. along. And a lot of stuff we haven't been able to uh, but I was going to ask if, if we had to uh, maintain this system for the permit as well. I mean, is it like, because if it doesn't work, then, then maybe we'll have to add things, then the then the permit might change to be stricter. Is that possible? Correct. And we're but a lot of the stuff we're we're taking care of now. Mm -hmm. But the right. permit, you know. But if we don't take care of it, but there's a if whole we don't maintain it, then we're going to get in trouble, mm -hmm. right? 
So, Brutus, it's fair to say that the town, since we've known about this now for what, 10 years? This is longer, been our, 12, this 12, longer, 20, yeah. 30. 20. <clears throat> the town is, I mean, you've got to admit, the town has been making proactive, progressive moves towards improving our lands in particular, as well as making sure that lands and other, other properties that are coming online are yep. meeting certain strict regulations, true? I mean, we, I mean, look, at, for, for example, over by in Remington, what was the name of that street? Parliament, not Parliament. It was a Parliament Street over by behind Kennedy mm -hmm. that got reduced mm -hmm. yes. from a road that was almost as wide as forty-five feet, mm -hmm. yeah, it which, was. which is basically you could land a small airplane on it. Yeah, that's yeah. how wide that road is. California. So that's all the impervious surface on top of everything else that we've already done to improve our reduction in impervious surfaces. All of that benefits the stormwater runoff. We, we basically already invest, you know, a pro and we have a slide on this in a, in a couple slides, mm -hmm. but the town already invests with its operating budget well over a million dollars a year in a lot of what you're a lot yep. of what you're saying. And, and a lot of that is um, keeping up um, with certain investments the town has made over the years. And a lot of that is maintenance staff, you know, doing this in-house. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our uh, DPW employees do a lot of this work. Um, and so in a, in a few minutes, we'll get to what, you know, we'll get into detail exactly what um, taxpayer dollars are already being spent mm -hmm. on stormwater. Um, and it might come to shock you how much we're already doing yep. and, um, you know, how much the town has already invested in it, which has uh, led to doing a lot of good work. But to Bruce's <laughs> earlier slide, it's led to us being a leader on this issue, um, you know, throughout the country, if not uh, the New England region. So. Um, I know there's a, the, a cost out chart coming up yep. in a couple slides. So it just goes real quickly, obviously, what are the problems? Water quality impact, we talked about that. Um, increase in best management practices. Um, flooding and drain system capacity. You know, Franklin, we, we don't have a lot of flooding problems like some communities do because we're pretty much uphill. Yeah. But but there are areas of town that flood. I, the one I was talking about before, I think people know on, on Dean Ave, down in that corner would always flood out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we're making improvements to that. We've actually... Uh, we uh, we worked with the uh, the people that are building the uh, apartment complex mm -hmm. over there. I gotta tell this one funny story. It's not <laughs> funny. So the last grant we got was we we came up with the idea of doing a public private partnership to fix okay. that problem because we have no land over there. They own all the land. How to get off? So we got a grant from EPA. Let's see how this works. You know how it works? Awful. Because <laughs> the laws in Massachusetts do not allow towns to work with the the public side. The procurement laws, everything else. It's so hard for us to work together on something. We have the same goal. Everybody wants to be here, but we can't do it together. So what's going to come out of this grant is you got to change a lot of laws mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to how to do things. Bob, you know, it's like yeah. they want to do it one way, right? But also, do we have to pay um, uh, uh, prevailing wages? Prevailing wage. If you do, if you don't. And then how do I pay them? I can't even. I can't just write them a check. I have to go through someone else. It's crazy, and, it, mm -hmm. and it's so. That's what's coming out of this grant that they have to make improvements there, and hopefully they will. This is one of the things that they're going to learn from mm -hmm. it. But it, at the end of the day, that corner will be fixed, <laughs> and that water is going on private property, and it's going to get recharged. But it's a it's a difficult one that we learned that they're not always good. Huh? I think we have a question in the oh, audience. It's okay. I gather that a lot of stormwater goes in the drains that are on roadways. In, fr in front of my house, there, there are a couple of drains. I imagine those drains have rocks in them, and the stormwater just goes into the ground. Sometimes, but not always. Most of the time, it doesn't. Most of the time, those are called catch basins. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the water is going into the catch basin and then being piped somewhere else to go either into a stream or a wetland, sometimes into Floodline. a forebay. Um, but if it just goes into the catch basin and stays there, that's called the leaching catch basin. And we do have some of those in town. It's not a large percentage, but there are some that do operate that way. Why, why do we have the water going somewhere else other than straight in the ground? Because I think the easiest way to say it, um, Dean Ave, those were leaching catch basins. If they would... For little storms, they would catch that water, but when we have a big storm, right. they flood. They can't handle the capacity. So the idea is they catch the water, and, it, and they're, they're called deep sumps, but they catch the, the TSS, the, the, sediment. the sediment, and then the overflow would go into a pipe that hopefully goes into a forebay. It goes downstream somewhere. It's carried away because right. we don't want to flood the road. And I imagine that 
those pipes are old, and that's what you're talking about, that you need to keep up in aging? Some cost of replacement. Some are very old. A lot, a lot were done, um, like up on Skyline. They were they were all metal pipes that all rotted mm -hmm. on the bottom, so we had to replace a lot of those. Some are concrete. They're holding up longer than others. But yes, that is part of the system. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, flooding and drainage capacity. We look at that. Then we looked at the. I talked about that mapping. Kate's doing all the mapping for everything. Um, the increased costs associated with the permit, and then a backlog of capital improvements that we just haven't been able to do. Mm -hmm. So implementation, I, this is kind of what we talked about before. It's, uh, you know, every project has a stormwater element to it. Uh, roadway, sidewalk removal, now in roadways, BMPs, rain gardens, tree wells, bioretention areas to try to do, mm -hmm. and then the residential rain garden program. I think a lot of people, we've been doing this for so long, they're all over town. Existing, this is what um, I think you were talking about, Jamie, yeah. the existing stuff we're doing right now. So this, this is stuff that's already in our operating general fund budget right now. So storm, sewer, and culvert maintenance, just about $88,000 a year that's digging up, taking the stuff out of the catch basins. Uh, catch basin inlet cleaning, um, we have about 1,800 catch basins a year. basically what, he, what yep. Frank was talking about. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Street sweeping. Um, you know, over $100,000. You know, the permit requires us to, to sweep the streets once a year. But I think, you know, we do downtown a little more and the other areas that it happens. If we have um, big rain events, we got to clean up certain areas of town. Uh, system inspections, we got to go out and check everything out. Stormwater design development permitting assistance, just that's just the cost of doing stuff, filling out these permits. Um, MS4 permit. permit compliance requirements, $100,000. <coughs> these are all the plans that EPA requires us to do, public education, outreaching, mapping, data, um, capital improvement projects. A lot of this stuff, it's not like, it's once we tie it in, like the road reader, we have to build, rebuild some stormwater. You know, we have to build some catch base, we're gonna put some four bays in. So that's where that money, and then obviously the equipment that we have to buy to do it. So, this was our 2019, so this was last year, um, program administration. You go through all that, 135,000. Regulatory compliance and enforcement, 119. Drainage engineering, 100,000. Operation and maintenance, that's most of the stuff that you'd see. Um, catch basin, inlet cleaning, leaf pickup, uh, BMP facility, IDD tracking, emergency response. You know, that's the big chunk, 500,000, mm -hmm. give or take. And then capital improvement we've talked about. So right now in your annual cost, in your fixed budget, this is we're about, you know, 1.1 million. And it's going up next year. So these are funds that are, uh, you know, compete with police, fire, the library, <coughs> the senior center, yep. schools. So, you know, this goes up. That means we all know there's only so much money. <laughs> Something else is going to be cut. Cut. Right. It has to be cut right. or reallocated or you don't do it. But this Love is it. what we're paying right now. Yes. Yep. Yep. Just so yep. everybody knows, that's what we're paying now. Yep. It's already in the budget. It's part of the, the part of depot there. Yep. So current stormwater funding sources, um, as I said, it comes out of the general fund, and it's basically, as you know, the general fund is um, residential property account for about eighty percent of that budget. Um, but the thing is that residential properties have less burden on the stormwater system based on the purpose area. So re residential properties only have about 45% of the impervious area. And what we talk about impervious area would be the, the, uh, the driveways, the rooftops, walkways, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, commercial industrial properties, such as retail business stuff, they have about 55% of the impervious area. So even though the residents they pay 80% of the taxes, they only have 45% of the problem. Mm -hmm. right. and, vice, and then the businesses, they have 55% of the problem only paying 20%. Yeah. So that's why we look at a utility. Um, so this is what they're talking about over the next um, five years. This is just the average that's gonna um, go along with it. So basically you're looking at you know 1.2 million going up to two million. Mm -hmm. So right. over the next five years, you, we got to figure out how to come up with another $800,000. So this is to comply with the permit, yep. right? And you know, some of the other thing goes along with it. We get some uh, you know, additional road funding, uh, drainage improvements, drinking right. water protection, street sweeping, and, and then we talk about curbside leaf pickup. <clears throat> Question? Oh, yep. If you take that money out of the town budget and you allocate it as a separate fund, like you do trash, and you assess people based on impervious area, mm -hmm. then you have freed up 
$2 million for other expenses, but the homeowner, the residential homeowner, can't take that off their income tax if they itemize. And you are and you are setting up a separate fund, and are you setting up a separate fund for the purpose of being able to spend two million dollars for other items? The short answer is Frank, yes to everything. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm I'm not certain on is the income tax yeah. deduction, which I think you you brought up, but. Um, it's almost like you knew the presentation. You probably watched the other night. You know the slides that are coming up. But, you, but Frank, oh, you, think, but, but Mr. Falvey, you're exactly right, correct. Right down, and you I know. had an interview yep. on Frank presents on this very subject. Yep. That is exactly the case. And I think we're going to get to some pros and cons in a couple slides of how you fund this system you know, versus setting up, you know, paying for it out of your property taxes, which in this case, over the five year period that we're talking about, slowly but surely, you're correct, uh, Frank, you would phase out the 1.149 million that is currently being um, funded in the operating budget and you would slowly move that over as funds came in, as programs got developed, as the catch basin cleaning program got going, as staff was needed to comply with the permit, you'd slowly phase that over over a few years um, up until you get to the two million roughly annually. And the utility that is set up is exactly like um, the water, sewer, and trash refuse accounts now. Um, those are statutory uh, programs that have to be paid by the ratepayers, and they can only be used for those sources. So none of the money raised here in this budget could be used for anything else in the operating budget. It would just be used for stormwater. It's the exact same way, um, you know, I'm just also speaking to the folks at home um, that may be watching this, but it's exactly like your trash rate. You pay 200 and whatever it is, 50, 60, $70 a year for the whole over four quarters, and that money can only be used for recycling trash and those services. So um, we're gonna get to a few more of the pros and cons of both, um, which was a new slide that we added after the first discussion. Right. And, um, and then folks at home and folks here in the audience can kind of weigh, um, you know, which one might be better for Franklin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Anybody else? Um, so funding, obviously, we talked about taxes versus utility <laughs> fees. <laughs> property taxes are based on assessed value of the property. Taxes and properties do not pay property tax. Uh, no relationship on the impact of the property amount of stormwater generated by the development of the site. And no opportunity to provide credits for on-site stormwater management. Revenue can support any town need. So the stormwater utility is a fee proportional to the estimated stormwater generated from the property as measured by impervious area. All properties, including tax exempt, pay their share of the fee, allows for credits to be granted for on-site controls, operates as an enterprise fund, and the revenue is dedicated to stormwater management only. Mm -hmm. um, and so, one, of, and oh. one of the things I think is important for people to realize is that since we're, since we, if we do this now ourselves, we can sort of design it we can design, we can give people credits for certain um, <coughs> in, no, pervious, mm -hmm. per <laughs> not impervious, but pervious, you know, things they have in their, their driveway maybe, <coughs> or um, their rain barrels, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, right? And we can actually design it now. Instead, if we don't do anything, we might get a fee, a, a fine, and then uh, we're told yeah. what we have to do. Yeah. So that's the difference. If we actually are proactive, then we can design it ourselves <clears throat> for what for what works best for Frank. I think is really important yep. for people to understand. And, mm -hmm. and Brutus, I think you would agree that um, for as much as this is an unfunded mandate, and we have to deal with this, as mm -hmm. as, I, as, I, as I've said many times, um, one of the biggest benefits I think you pointed out earlier was the fact that with the restructuring of the impervious, impervious surfaces in order to get the stormwater out of the chows, we are in fact recharging our own system mm -hmm. yeah. for the right. most part, which yeah. is giving us back our own water, which will help avoid us any potential droughts in the future or anything, water issues we may have Good down point. the line. And you know, it, it, I, I will say, Council, that you know, it's a big permit, and but there are good things in that permit. And, and, and part of it is there are communities that haven't done a lot. You know, as I said before, there's 
there's a hundred seventy five million dollar piece of infrastructure out there that we're really not taking care of. That's kind of forcing us to do it. So there are good parts of it. There are parts in there I think are a little the phosphorus control. That's mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of that. I mean I you know we'll get that, to that that's me. <laughs> I'll get to that later. So but it is a permit. But anyways, looking at the taxes versus utility fees, the pros right. and cons. So property right. taxes new slide. New this slide. is the new slide. Yeah, this is the new slide. Okay. So the cons is not every property pays. Many are tax exempt. Yes. So like state and federal buildings, like the post office doesn't pay. Uh, Mass DOT doesn't pay. Um, religious institutions don't pay. Colleges, Dean College doesn't pay any any taxes. So um, it's based on assessed value of the property, not the amount of impervious area. So you know, depending where you live, you could. Pay more, pay less. The size, it's it's, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, there's no opportunities for credit. So if you're doing, if you put in a rain guard or a rain barrel or you collect something, tax man don't care that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, tax, tax funding without complete, huh? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> tax, tax, tax man don't care. Tax man don't care. <laughs> I think we all pay taxes. Yeah, people see us as yeah, yeah, no, no, not us. I had my Wait taxes done last night, so I'm not. <laughs> 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 oh, I hear you. Uh, so tax funding, the, the funding for this obviously competes, and I think I yeah. said this before, you know, schools, library, mm -hmm. police, fire, and that's, you know, it's up to the council to decide how to do this. Um, and then the pros, we looked at it, um, <laughs> and we tried, I, I, I couldn't come up with anything. We actually thought quite a bit. I did. And then I was going to say status quo. We don't change it. No. Not changing is easy. We right. thought about it quite a bit, and we actually had a large discussion about it. We slept on it a couple nights. <laughs> and then we just said, you yeah. know what? <laughs> like, let's just be straightforward that we really couldn't think of any great pros to the property tax, um, mm. you know, when looking at this. And I think that also property taxes are something that, um, yep. You know, the trend seems to be from the federal and state levels to push a lot of a lot of things um, down to the local level for the property tax. And as people maybe watch the budget presentation last week, um, and as they'll continue to see, uh, competition for any new dollars that are raised through property taxes is obviously a very uh, a fierce competition. So I think we, we put there question marks because that was our honest that was our honest opinion. If people have pros of they come out yeah. through this process over the next several weeks. Yeah. You know, you please pro, let, let us know. Us know. <laughs> really, really, really right? had to scrape. Right. Yeah. Really, really had to scrape yeah. the bottom of the rain barrel for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh. I mean, just just to make you know, <laughs> with the you, utility Bob, fees, <laughs> with the utility fees, it will be lower because religious institutions, colleges, and being yeah. a lobby yeah. band. Mm -hmm. Just, right. you know, that's a good so, point. Yeah, it's more equitable because yeah. everybody right. pitches. That's a really good point. Right. Everybody yeah. has to pitch mm -hmm. in right. to help. Right. And I think that's a, a good thing. It is a community effort, undoubtedly. You know, I, I even told Jamie, the like, state pays. They, have, they right. have to pay the town. They have to pay for the DOT place over on Grove Street. You know, the post office, the federal government has to pay. So, um, and obviously Dean College. So right. it's, 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 a, it's, it's good. Um, fees based on amount of pervious area service mm -hmm. on your property, roof, driveway, patio. You know, the more you have, the more you pay. That's just kind of the way it works. It's a user fee. Um, there's opportunities for credits. The one... I think we have right. a slide on it, but we'll talk about it. But you actually can do certain things, and you can get credits, and that's probably what Mel said. We can establish, because we're going through this process, how much credit you actually get. You can't get 100%, because it just doesn't work out mm -hmm. that way. But usually most communities deal like around a 50% mm -hmm. type thing that you can get. Is that for residents also? Yes, residents and businesses. Can you, did, yeah, the did, question did, was asked if it, for residents or businesses. You want to like make sure, for the mic. make sure people can hear it at yeah. home, okay? Yeah, I was, I was, I was just curious if it was was for residents because in my remodeling my house, um, actually, I don't know if it was the town of Franklin that had that in mind, but I actually have a recharge system that's like 800 to 1,000 gallons that <laughs> catches everything that comes off my roof. Mm -hmm. Nice, so that's I don't awesome. Know, that's yeah. great. <laughs> so so I, I don't know if that's part of the town of Franklin thinking about that, and that's the reason why they had me do that. But would that be factored in in terms of your determination of what people would pay or what I would pay for the utility? It would be. So you'd be able to apply for a credit. They yes. look where the water's getting I captured know. from the rooftops. So say it catches all your roof, then that area is basically taken off. So you get credit for that. You wouldn't have to pay the. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I want one of those. That's great. Yeah. And I, I would imagine that when we get into this 
situation we should have workshops just so yep. Yep. people oh, yeah. people right. know yep. people know what they can do to to cut that down to 50 percent right. which right. is a great idea and one yep. thing like i you know just because i think it's a good time to one thing i've always pushed back on on epa and conservation law and charles river they want you to do it right now they want they want all this stuff to be done i'm a big believer in you know doing when the property is redeveloped right so, existing or, non-conforming yeah. yeah when they come mm -hmm. in for a permit it's either you can look at the big y you know, we talk we'll talk about yep, the big we'll y. Talk they, about that. yeah they put these huge structures in but they did when they're permitting or they get redeveloped the property that's when you do it. when we do our roads that's when we do it right if we went to stop and shop that plaza down there and say now you're gonna put in all this storm water stuff right now dig up your property that's millions of dollars they weren't <laughs> it's, 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 it's ridiculous it's not fair but that's what they want to do so that's what we we push back on yeah, that this by way of example um i just of course came from my code class today um for instance is is electrical things that might be in your house just by way of example um the, the town, the city, the states, they can't come in and tell you that you need to bring your house up to today's code. It's because most of the things that exist in our house are pre-existing, non-conforming, and therefore they just can't come in and say, oh, by the way, this is the new code. You need to take everything that's in your house that's before 2020 and bring it up to today's code. That's not how the law works. It's pre-existing, non-conforming. You have to bring things up that you install that are new to today's code. But if it's pre-existing, like a lot of things in my house, I don't have to update them to today's code. However, that's not the case with the CPA mandate. They are forcing us, regardless of whether something's pre-existing, non-conforming, to bring it up to code so that we meet this mandate. It's absolutely illogical and it's very expensive and this is my frustration with it is the fact that we have to basically we can't do this in our normal way of addressing things as problems come up bring them bringing them up to code as we as we see fit during during the process of maintaining or bringing things up up to date um, this is something they want us to do now Mm -hmm. And we've been fighting tooth and nail for as long as I've been on the council. And I want to continue to fight them. But as at one point that the town administrator pointed out was they just want us to show that we're making a good, fair effort towards meeting their mandates. And when this is the first step in meeting that is having these forums, getting together, expressing to the community what their goals are and what our, our responses are to their goals. Um, so. I'm, this is why I love this forum, and I hope that more people will show up to these, these forums to, mm -hmm. to learn more, if not watch it on TV. But. Okay. Um, yes, just one Come question. On. Just so, the, and I, you might have already said this before I came, but how many other towns have right. utility fees? 20. Yeah, it's 12. We got to get a slide coming up. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, just, to, just, everyone, was just for the, for, for the, you know, there's, there's almost 7,000 communities throughout the country. There's 200 communities in Massachusetts that have to comply with this. So out of the 350 cities and towns in the state, you know, you could even consider maybe Berkshire County, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's 32 towns in that whole county. Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, most of Eastern Massachusetts has to comply with something. Um, and there are 20 communities roughly are now, uh, Bellingham and Millis are the most local, okay. who have already done utilities. Um, and we've seen that trend pretty heavily towards the utility. Um, and a lot more towns are doing it because they're faced with the same thing. And now with the permits in place, they yeah. got that sticker in front or the window sticker, mm -hmm. so now they got to figure out how to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So you know, we, we talked about this before, only money that's raised for stormwater can stay in stormwater. So if it comes to the utility, can't use it for water, can't use it for schools, can't use it for police fire, has to stay there, just like all the other utilities. The cons, hey, at the end of the day, it's still costing the property owners and town money. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really is. Um, and But this is not what we can do about it. Either way, you hate to say, well, you're paying one way or the other. It's because yep. the permit don't care. And EPA says that. I was down in D.C., we testified. I'm like, I'm like, this is so expensive. Like, we don't care. That's <laughs> not our job. Yeah. Our job is to come up with the policy. Congress is the one supposed to come up with the money. And Congress ain't coming up with the money. So they just pass it down the state and they pass it down the town. Yeah. So that's yeah. where we're at. Yeah. And I think we can, since we can have an opportunity for credits yes. with it, it, it hopefully will... Well, like this gentleman in the in the audience, like mm. hopefully he he won't have to pay much yes. at all, right? Correct. If you have, so you have a way that we can actually help the whole system. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the taxpayers or the property owners. Correct. Um, rate structure. We kind of talked about this. This is how we figure it out. So basically, it's a pretty common system. So um, the flat billing rate is 
basically on a thousand square feet of impervious area. Um, all property in towns pay based on the same square footage. Doesn't matter who you are. Um, for the average home in Franklin, is about three thousand square feet. So to be a, a three unit for three billing units is because it's some would be more, some would be less. And then if you look at big businesses, they could have fifty. You know, so they got to pay fifty the rate. Yeah. Um, it's based on analog done by GS the GIS, which would be Gene and Kate, and they've already done all this. This is <coughs> other work we've done already. Mm -hmm. And so our analysis resulted are basically 82,000 properties. Billing units. Billing units. units. Billing okay. units. Spread out throughout the town. Gotcha. So we, that's how they, then they all get divided up either by the residential, the condo association, the commercial, whatever. Just really quickly. Yep. First. So, you know, that's an important slide, but I want to make sure folks at home just step back and think of this one more uh, part is it's a thousand square feet per of impervious surface. So if you think of your property, right, and say you've got a you know a three thousand square foot property, here's the discussion relative to the property taxes versus the utility. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pay based on three thousand square foot of your property, even though two thousand square feet of that might be lawn? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to pay for what you're actually contributing the stormwater runoff to, which might be the thousand square feet? So we'll get to it in a minute, but the <coughs> thousand square feet where we're at to comply with the program is about 28 bucks per 1,000 square feet of impervious, surface, of impervious coverage on your property. So it is not the entire property um, if you do a utility. <coughs> and that's a really important point Absolutely. because people may look at their property and say, oh, I've got 4,000 square feet, that's my property. Right. Oh, times I've got to pay 20, times 28. Yeah. That's yeah. not the case. So you might only have 1,500 square feet of impervious coverage, the driveway, the walkway, your roof, a shed, you know, whatever it might be. <laughs> um, all that's aggregated up and we'll get to a slide. We've actually analyzed uh, basically the entire community through GIS. Mm -hmm. And so we virtually know um, almost every question. property in town. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, there's a question. Since you've done the analysis, I assume at some point along the process, you're going to make that listing available so that you know, like I can look at my house. The gentleman who has the mitigation in place can look at his house and see what the expected billing units are going to be. Clearly, it's going to still take a lot longer to actually fill, figure out what the charges are, et cetera. And I know what this, that's the subcommittee's job, but at least we can mm -hmm. find out where we are today to at least begin to understand what the picture is. That's correct. I think at the previous meeting, um, somebody else asked a similar question about potentially having a stormwater calculator mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah. type of idea. And that is the plan, that, to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I'm so glad Kate said that. I was, she, I was looking right over to her as the genius in the room, yeah. like, thinking if there's one person that can actually make that happen, yes. it's probably Kate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, um, thank you, Kate. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, we always ask Kate to do the impossible. Yeah. I can do it. And she does she it. Does I it. Know. She Kate does the great. Yeah. Kate the great. There's a question over here when you look at the cost is there any is the cost more associated with industry and commercial buildings or is the cost more associated with residential buildings in other words you, you, everyone's going to pay the, on the same square footage of impervious surfaces mm -hmm. but right. the thing I would like to know is when you look at the cost, is the cost weighted in a certain direction towards huge, uh, you, you know, huge areas like stop and shop mm -hmm. or, yeah. huge, or businesses as opposed to residential cost associated with yeah. what you're paying for? Yeah. So, so right now, we have the same rate. I think to Councilor Hamlin's point, you know, this is the feedback we're looking for. It may be something we can look into. Right now, the billing unit rate that we've calculated, which will be on a slide, one or two slides from now, um, is the same across the board. The difference is, though, is that for a house on Cottage Street or Pond Street or any, you know, any road in town, Beaver Oak, you think about that size of that property, they're obviously contributing far less impervious surface. Right. And I use this often, uh, Councilor Jones just uh, said it a minute ago, a Franklin Village Mall or an EMC, yeah. an EMC has a parking lot that's like, I think, acres. Um, acres and and acres. so they're going to be paying more. We do not distinguish, as of right now, a different rate, meaning $38 for uh, a, a commercial property and $15 for a residential property. It's the same billing rate throughout the entire community. 
but that's not my question. Okay. My question is, all the two million dollars that you're talking about, oh. and you associate, can you associate that cost more of it with an industrial area that requires more of the money that you of the two million would be associated with industrial, or is more of the money of the two million associated with residential? I have a sense, although I have no information. I'd like you to look at that. I'd so like you to try as best you can to allocate where that, why that you're having that cost, and is it more associated with a particular type of impervious service, uh, surface, and maybe how big it is. Do you, uh, do you follow? Am, yeah. am I clear with my question? Yep. Yep. You want to answer that, Jean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the way the stormwater system is designed now, so how we size it in capacity, is just on impervious, total impervious, right? So we don't look at the system and look at land use, per se. So whether um, it's stop and shop, where the runoff is coming from, or it's, it's, it's your driveway, the way that the system is built now is around impervious area and the way the phosphorus numbers that we have that EPA designs are all on impervious. What's the runoff from impervious? They don't <laughs> break it down smaller than that. So I'm, though I'm sure if we look closely, different land uses probably do have different impacts. Um, but at this point, the, the, the whole system is designed and the, the permit is designed all just really on the total impervious and then the size and the capacity of your system and then how you clean that. So the catch basins, for example, on a residential street are cleaned exactly the same way the catch basins are cleaned in the industrial sections of town. Um, you know, there's lots of work I, spe I expect you could do to go test that material right. and, and do some more work on that, but, but the cost of doing that may be pro prohibitive. So I think in general, this is kind of how you see it done across the country, but if you think there is something specific out there that is costing you more, it's something to, work, to look at. Yeah. But I don't know of any at this point. Yeah. Mr. Valley, I mean, I think I think your point is well taken. Um, I think we all actually, I heard up here as you were talking the second time, I think we, we all it. kind of went, okay. <laughs> so I think it's something we'll look at. I'll definitely, um, as we continue to um, shape this, I think it's an important question to ask if there are any um, land uses or any businesses or anybody that's actually doing a lot more discharge that we don't want you know, maybe there's some sort of inequity there. So we'll definitely take a look at if there's any land uses that are um, contributing maybe more pollution than the average resident, um, you know, in town. It's, it's a good question, because most average residents, right, are just driving their car in and out right. <laughs> of their driveway, and it, it feels very low impact. But if there's another business town where there's, you know, tractor trailer trucks nonstop, and mm -hmm. there's more de-icer and more antifreeze and things like that, you know, we'll work with Gene and, and Kate and see if we can, um, and Brutus, and think if we can, uh, you know, see if there's any other examples out there of like somebody a, that's done that. It's like a good, a, it's a really good question. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, that is very Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. <clears throat> Stormwater utility fee option, uh, preliminary rate. This is uh, kind of what we talked about. Yeah, 2015. The whole program cost basically is two million bucks. And then the, we have to give it allowances for credits that people come in, they'll do it. Operating emergency reserves, just like we have to have a reserve mm -hmm. in our water and sewer, because you never know what happens, like mm -hmm. a relic. Mm -hmm. um, yep. <laughs> it happens. You do. So our total revenue, we're looking at 2.3. Available billing units, 82,000. And so that comes up with basically our $28. Uh, and obviously that number um, could go up and down, mm -hmm. depending on program costs. Per year. Costs. Huh? Per year. Per year. Per, year. Yeah. per, per year, year, per, per billing, billing unit. Per, per billing unit. unit, yes. I think the next slide shows various examples of the billing yes. units. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's, yeah. So we have right here some examples. So if you look at four billing units at $28, $28.15, then you'd pay the town, the, the, the utility, I should say, you'd pay the utility $122.60 a year. And across, obviously you see across a single family, if you have two billing units, um, mm -hmm. you're gonna pay $56.30. And then the one here is the 550 billing units, which is the, the big Y across the street from the town hall, they would pay $15,482. And what this slide, you know, when you when you really look at it closely, and if folks go online or if you're watching home from Franklin TV, you know, you've got two single family houses on the left on those examples. One, if you if you go up to the legend, 
is essentially a, a one acre lot mm -hmm. in town. That's generally what you're going to see as a, as a median value. Certainly that could go up or down depending on whether you have a pool or whether or not you have other stuff in the backyard and various things. But that's what you're looking at as the average for a little bit of an acre or pl acre plus lot. The middle unit is actually, I think if I read it correctly, is basically a quarter acre lot. Um, and so the middle one is probably the example that's going to reflect most properties in town and the most people. Um, and, um, and then the one on the right is we use the big Y example very often um, because they have a, a large parking lot. Um, but we go one step further on the next slide to explain the credit system which in the case of Big Y, most people don't know what's underground underneath that parking lot. And Brutus has taken some great photos, or somebody did, <laughs> of the Big Y parking lot in construction. So those big, those are big storm um, chambers <clears throat> yep. that was put under the parking lot that you wouldn't see because they had limited land use. They didn't, they couldn't put the big four bay in, you know. So that's this is what they had to do. Plus, we also have uh, a well behind there. You know, drinking mm -hmm. water, it's in, it's in zone two. Yes. So this is what they they were required to do. But this is, you know, this is obviously an extreme example, but to uh, the resident of Fort Talk, you know, they build houses now, you put small things on it, you put your downspouts in the ground, you can get credit for your rooftops. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you have the big yellow yep, tubes. Yep, yep. Yep. That's what you have. Exactly what you yeah. have. Yep. <laughs> that big, right? <laughs> yeah. You see that little guy right there? All the water. All the water. So but one thing I just want to show on here is that, you know, like Dean College was doesn't pay taxes right now. They pay they have eight hundred and two um, units. I think it was like fifty grand a year, I think we figured that out too or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Good math. So um, so anyways, we talk about a credit policy. We haven't we we obviously would do a credit policy. We just haven't got the exact criteria behind it, like how much credit you could potentially get. Mm -hmm. But that's something this that's gonna, this committee would work through yeah, yeah, yeah. to figure out what's uh, what's right. And that would apply. This is brought up before, whether it's a residential, commercial property, and uh, for pre-existing stuff that they've already done. The way I said about EPA, you know what. They uh, they gave the town of Franklin credit, so if someone like the Big Y did work, they gave us credit also. So that's that's how that would happen. And um, just before we do the famous leaf pickup, you know, oh, just yes. to bring it back a little earlier to one of the conversations with credit policy, this is not an option that's available under the property tax model. Right. So Big Y under that model is going to pay for the whole parcel, and they would not get any credit, you know, um, just like any residential owner. Um, which I think is the reason why we're up here talking about the utility because, you know, I don't think we find that as very fair, mm -hmm. to be totally nice. honest about mm -hmm. it. You know, they, when they came in, they spent a lot of money to do the system. Mm -hmm. um, they're helping our well in behind of there. Um, they're helping our groundwater recharge. And as Brutus pointed out earlier, you know, we get all of our drinking water from groundwater in Franklin. So groundwater protection is a very serious issue in Franklin. Yes. So I just had to make that quick comment to kind of tie it back to the beginning, which is why we're here to discuss the utility, because under that model, um, you know, Big Y would not be able to get a credit. Um, in Dean College's favor, they did have a lot of their property would not be eligible for a credit. Um, a couple of the more modern developments would be eligible for credit. Right. Um, you know, and so, you know, you, you kind of treat the, the credit or abatement policy a little bit more fair for the folks that have actually done something about this and yes. invested the money up front mm -hmm. in the right way, no matter who they are. Yep. Right. That's true. So, Good point, Jamie. And the leaf pickup. <laughs> so phosphorus. This is a major source of pollution the leaves. Um, so part of the program we looked at, and this because so we talk about uh, the low-hanging fruit, um, cost effective. I mean, it costs money. It's not free, but you get a really big credit for this from um, EPA. Um, they'll give you like a, we haven't got the following, but 10%. So it's eight, a, to 10%. eight to 10 percent, which is a lot. It, it's going to depend how much leaves we actually pick up because they'll want us to weigh them and do everything else. But we also look at it. Uh, it's, it could be a good service for the residents of town. At least you know, if you're paying 80 bucks a year, hey, at least you get your leaves picked up. You can say. You know, you got that way. So that's kind of we looked at it because it's cheap. And the only thing I go back to, yeah, as a cost associated, yeah, we got trucks, yeah, we got pickup leaves, but it's cheaper than building a big, huge four bay to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
so but this is what we got to deal with I, I make these you know I, I made the joke to EPA I'm like what do you want me to do F- rake the Franklin Forest would that give me save me money and they look at it and they're like yeah that would make sense I'm like no <laughs> but that's the, that's what they do and yeah. and you know the, the leaf pickup <laughs> and I said in the last uh-huh. one it's tough because you know What's going to happen? You guys are going to notice, right? They call about the trash, right? I had all my leaves out there, and they didn't come by and pick them up. It's going to be another DPW getting yelled at because we missed a day. They blew the leaves out there, whatever it is, right? So it's not an easy process, but it's a cost-effective way to do it. <laughs> so, t- so this is a rare example at times, just uh, just for a little bit of humor as we wrap up, but this is where the town administrator and the DPW director sometimes do disagree. Um, <laughs> where, you know, when we were going through this and working with Gene, you know, I did see this as an opportunity. If people are going to pay more money, let's make lemonade out of lemons here. You know, there's not much we can do about it, but let's try to provide some customer services and some value added for people's money, right? If they're going to have to pay an extra 80 bucks, let's try to give them an idea of what their 80 bucks is going to go spent on. You know, more roads, um, cash basin and drainage cleaning, better infrastructure, better drinking water supply. And because phosphorus in leaves is such a big polluter, of the Charles River, and it flows all the way downstream to Watertown, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you get such a big credit, this is a very affordable program to be able to get a huge credit on our on our permit. You know, as Gene pointed out, it's, it's basically a 10 percenter. That's a huge chunk of your permit. And so to me, this is a win, win, win. Um, and Brutus is correct. I mean, I may be the town administrator. He's the one that's going to have to implement this. And he will get the phone calls of, of when the leaves don't get picked up or whatever. The councils yeah, may get phone calls. Yeah, they all will. But, but, but it's, really, it's really windy uh, out. Yeah. Like, oh, that's no. Right. Oh, oh, call call the road. Yeah. Rain today. But, yeah. but still, you know, we look at all of a lot of the services we do as customer services. I mean, that's what we yes. are. And, you know, we do frequently hear messages. Oh, Milford does this, Milford this, Milford that. And so... Um, this is kind of a win-win-win, and you know, just like curbside pickup or any other service we do, you know, it'll take a few years to phase in and, and to get it perfect. Um, but I do think that this is a worthwhile endeavor for a lot of people, and, and I think over time people will enjoy the the annual fall leaf pickup. So, um, and it will get us it. a huge credit. Well, it, they don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, that's you know, right. we, that's convenience right. is something no, Americans true. love, um, and so and and from a, a policy wonk perspective, as I already mentioned. You, you do get a huge win on your permit, and the EPA really looks right. favorable upon something like this. So to me, it's kind of a win-win-win, um, you know, of a policy, and, it, and it's it's fairly inexpensive uh, to implement. So uh, it's certainly cheaper than roads. Yeah, but uh, uh, you will schedule sections of the town that you will do mm-hmm. at certain times. Yes, and we'll know <laughs> so when we get the call from somebody at Kennedy when you're done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We will know. <laughs> Oh, it's true. <laughs> it's just another way to please the residents. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's another question. Right. <laughs> yep. Impervious surface, uh, asphalt, the roads in the parking lots. The, no one has come up with a uh, uh, some sort of alternative that is durable but porous. I mean, we we could go back. We could go back to. I could do my driveway in uh, yeah, well, crushed stone, right? And then that would be impervious. No, it would be pervious. If Actually, this no, is a impervious. really good question. I was just thinking of that, Frank, earlier. To be honest with you, <laughs> so Actually, yeah. this again okay. is one of these issues yep. that's customizable under utility and not under the property tax uh, rule. But Brutus, we we actually did address this at the last we meeting. We did. So. Yeah. So, According to DEP, the, um, the stone driveways, crushed stone driveways, are are impervious. You got to be kidding me! No, I'm not. I think <laughs> you're making another joke. I thought. No, I, geez, who was, fought it more than me? Who was it? Once you start driving on them, unfortunately. Yeah, they they pack down. So, um, packed. but with all the money that this is costing. No chemist or, or industry. So there or are, no, there, there are. It, there, there, isn't are. there are. Por- the there are por- There are porous pavements. There are there are concretes that are that are porous. The problem is they're very very expensive and to slow. Put in. <laughs> um, they're not. They're very slow. I mean, they and they, there's a lot of maintenance involved. Yeah, there's a lot of maintenance. Yeah, lot of maintenance. Look, so if you think about you, if you created a porous asphalt or concrete, it's got holes in there. You're right, the water can go, it's, it's put on stone. The problem is what happens to all those, those holes? They get filled with... Ice. No, sediment, sediment, sediment. sand, and all this other stuff. <laughs> so then you yes. have to vacuum them all out. 
No. So that's a whole other process. Oh, okay. And it's Stay expensive. Plugged. But, but there, it's do, a filter. Do, it is, it, is there a federal government money going to look to see an alternative to asphalt? Is there any research program being funded by anyone to look to an alternative for asphalt? Well, they have, but it just costs a lot of money. <laughs> there are options. It's, it's so literally four times as much to do a roadway than that, that, that asphalt. And then there's the additional maintenance associated with it. So um, it's, yeah, it's just expensive. But um, I think it's a good idea. Like when maybe MIT, you know, they do, a, they have material sciences, right? Maybe they'll start working on it, right? Uh, um, I, I haven't heard of anything <laughs> myself that's been cost effective. I have heard some things, Frank, in regards to what he was talking about. But I think ultimately, at the end of the day, really what this boils down to is as we progress through this process, it ta it's really just about reducing the impervious surface altogether. Mm -hmm. So if we're, we're, we're reducing roadways, we're reducing sidewalks, we're reducing driveways, we're, 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 re we're redoing a large lots in order to prevent the water from running off of them. Those are our most cost effective ways to approach this. And we've already been doing it now for the past 10 years, resizing the roads, resizing, taking out sidewalks. You know, there's the, that's probably our best bet for the simple reason is A, it avoids any maintenance on those extra sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And two, it, it's also avoids the extra expenses of trying to repair large roads. Um, there's a, actually a question on uh, Facebook Live right now. so. Let's like say hi to the audience oh, okay. on Facebook Live, and we'll. Are you gonna just maybe we should ask Scott? Scott, Scott will go over. Get the question, and we can try to answer get the it question. live. <laughs> so we do have a question from Facebook. Uh, Stephen is asking if water from my roof flows onto my grass and not onto my driveway, do I still get charged? Yes. Good question. It's impervious area. Could you define impervious surface? I mean, it's kind of a question that he's asking. Also, Frank was saying, could you kind of give us an idea of what impervious coverage is, like what qualifies? Well, once again, we, we come up, we'll, we'll come up as a, a group what we're actually going to say. But when we looked at it, we looked at it rooftops, mm -hmm. we looked at it driveways and walkways, yep. Yep. and then sheds or outbuildings at a certain size. What, what, what did we look at when you? Hundred square feet. Hundred square feet. Yeah. So if it falls on top of that, then that's considered an impervious area. Right. Okay, so because his question was, if it f falls and runs off onto an imperv an, onto a pervious surface, surface, why should he get charged for that? Everything eventually goes question. to a pervious area, just how it's conveyed there. So you have to think under the roof, under the driveway, that area cannot take a recharge. So it's pushed elsewhere, okay. and then that water becomes runoff because there's only so much capacity. You can't capture all that water. So if it, if it runs, say that water runs off his roof, it goes into his grass. The grass is already saturated. Right. can't take any more, so it goes in the driveway. Mm. Driveway can't take any. It goes down the roadway. The roadway can't take any more. It goes down the catch basin. So it's all catch basin goes down the pipe, goes down to the four bay, can't take any more. <laughs> okay. It goes down to my brook, it goes down the It right? goes out Get to it. Charles River. Yeah. Right. Okay, <laughs> all right, but so so it's about where the rain where the rain falls. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Okay. Where so that's lands. the answer. Where, where it lands. Where it lands. Where it lands. We have a question in the back. This is just for homeowners. Um, if we can't afford to or if Franklin homeowners can't yep. afford, or they're looking at redoing their driveways. Um, if they do that and put a catch basin in, or something like that, what are some things they can do in advance? You know, say say you need to have your driveway done. Uh, right. That might yep. help you apply for that credit. Well, is, there are different technologies, and one that I mean popular for driveways is uh, the, the pavers that people do. There's a lot of mm -hmm. porous pavers mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that are bricks that go out there. They get a whole, they let some that comes grass up, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to get credit for that. What they were talking about before, and um, uh, I've seen in some communities, they when they're building new houses, they require them to actually catch all the water um, from downspouts and put them into a, a dry well, basically, and that stays on site in the ground. Mm -hmm. So these where you can get credits for you can get credits for those also. And I think that it's a great point that we should that came up at our last information forum where um, people would like to have that on the website on our on the town website. Like I'm going to redo my driveway. What's the best way to make sure that I don't get mm -hmm. any um, that I can get credit Absolutely for it? Yeah. Um, and and so idea. I think we should put all these together in one place so that 
so that the community has that information. But I will say it, this is realistically. We talk about stuff. So if you're going to do your driveway over and say you're at the average house and you're paying 80 bucks a year and you're going to go from asphalt that maybe it's going to cost you $4,000 to put in a new driveway. You'd be dead by the time you leave the <laughs> yeah, right, Bob, well, you know yeah. what this, so if you want to do pavers, yeah. it's a great thing, but I guarantee a paver drive is going to cost you $20,000. Yes. Right. You, you, you follow me, it, it's hard. It's just like when you, people that were on Title V before, okay, when you went from Title Hall, you dug a hole in the ground, and you just let everything go over there. All of a sudden, if you go to Title V, and it costs $30,000. Oh, you don't want to do thirty thousand dollars? We're lucky enough we can tie in a sewer. Mm -hmm. Cost you twenty hundred fifty dollars tie in a sewer. Right. Then you got to pay for sewer. Right. It goes long, so the costs are associated. It's um, it might not be worth it, but only you can figure it out at home. And that's kind of like when we said the phosphorus fertilizer thing or going after leaves. It makes sense for us because the cost is much lower in the get go. And then we, it, there's a much quicker payback. It's not going to be no, forty right. years. Right. To, to right. your point, you're exactly right. But, um, Jamie. So the gentleman uh, just followed up uh, with a comment, but maybe we could respond to the comment as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is, so the water that falls onto my grass doesn't get charged, but the same water that falls on my roof does get charged. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Because just because it falls on the grass doesn't mean the capacity can take it all because there's different types of soils. Right. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you look at a city like Los Angeles, where water just continually just runs everywhere because there's very little infrastructure to handle it. Um, it is a little nuanced. It maybe doesn't make sense. I'm not even arguing that it does completely make sense. Um, but as Brutus had mentioned earlier, this is how the state DEP defines impervious surface. It's it doesn't require us, yeah, us. Um, to do it the same way. Um, but, you know, if we're going to ever meet the requirements of the permit, we have to define it in some sort of way. Um, I mean, in some ways, this whole thing, in a lot of ways, doesn't make sense. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I think right. that, yes, you know, that true. bears part of it, too. But, um, you know, I think Brutus explained, I don't think we need it again, uh, the life yeah. of a water drop uh, <laughs> when it comes off and hits the roof. I mean, it does go channeling down. I think during a, if folks that are paying attention at home, watch a next big rainstorm soon and really pay attention to where the water goes, um, you'll actually see that what Brutus just mentioned is, is fairly accurate. Um, mm -hmm. And that when the groundwater, when the, when the lawn is soaked, it does have a tendency to go somewhere and it just keeps on going right down over the, over the asphalt and it picks up all of those uh, what's that? Pollutants. Pollutants. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, we're getting into a heavy level amount of chemistry here too. That's certainly not part of my. <laughs> most of, the, most of the time, if it comes off the roof on one side, it rolls down the, down your grass anyway, and goes on the street. I think that's more what you're saying, Bruce. Correct. But, but uh, I, I'm going to be the devil advocate here and say, what if I rip my driveway up and put grass down, mm -hmm. and I park on the grass? I mean, I'm just yep. saying. That's okay. Yeah. That's good. Yep. You can That's do good. it. Right? Yep. It's allowed. Uh, it's allowed, right? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, just, I mean, I'm not saying I do that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> let's face it. You know, if we yes. start walking around the you, town of Franklin you, you, and your see. Your car's impervious. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, but that moves. But that he's, moves. But he's never home. He's driving. Yeah. 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 Right. All the time. But I'm just saying, to Frank's point, right? Yep. Frank, we could right. do that. We'd yep. rip our driveway and put grass down. Sure. sure. And then when you can park on the street, you just in the mud season, you park in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there right. you go. Right. And then you put a, a water a water barrel out. A rain barrel. Rain, rain, rain barrel. barrel. Mm -hmm. A rain barrel, right? Yep. To catch the water. Mm -hmm. We down to five dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, okay. the thing we talk about, you know. This is the bad part. Yeah, if we don't do this, you know. <laughs> Once again, I, I hope every under, everybody understands, these aren't Town of Franklin rules. We didn't come no. up with this stuff. It's nope. not my idea. It's not how to pay for it. We're just trying to give folks options how to do it. Right. I mean, it, this has come from the federal government. It's not us. So, um, you know, it's, Franklin has two choices and begin to implement slowly over time. And I think Jamie explains, like, about the OPED thing. You come up yep. with a plan. You slowly pay it off. And... You, you get it done. No one likes it. Nope. You got to pay, though. What were we, 36 million or something? OPEB? Oh, I OPEB? wish we no, were. Our oh, liability 70. on OPEB 60, 60, almost yeah. a little bit less than 70. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've saved up over time, though, you know, about six and a half million 
Uh, we hear audit reports every year that we do a really good job. We're well ahead of most communities, um, but I think you bite off what you can chew each year. And I think you know I wasn't here when that was implemented, but I'm, I almost guarantee you in any community with the OPEB liability issue, there was shock value up front, and then you try to form a policy that um, can fit within the residential budget and you just try to pick it off one year at a time. I joked when I first introduced this to the council was, we're just innocent bystanders, the six or seven of us, we're innocent bystanders here in a sense that we're just happened to be here when the permit went into effect. It was going on 20 years before we all got here and it's gonna continue on after hopefully I retire um, because I think I think that's just the, that's the size and longevity of this that, that folks have to really um, be able to digest. And, and, and you know, in regards to the, the longevity and the time frame, well, it, early when I was saying when I was a kid, um, it took many, many years for them to even make a, a dent in an improvement on the other end of the Charles River. And, and it's been improved, and it looks a lot better, and, 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 and the MIT students are told not to walk across the ice in the wintertime, but they do anyways. But it's a slow process, and, and as, as Jamie put it, we're, we're in a sense the victims in all of this because we're on the other end of the river, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be an ongoing process that, that, that the EPA and the feds are gonna be pushing on us for the remainder of our time and the other, in the other communities as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, we have to address the issue. Um, no one likes it, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to push back on on them, in hopes of holding them back as long as we can. But in the meantime, we do have to do something. So this is the beginning yeah, of that discussion. A plan in place. Right. Yes. Right. 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 It's right. like we have to have a plan in place for what's best for Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> it's the plan. Yeah, right. So, you know, and, although this one we can't put fully and, on the shelf. And Prudence is going to talk about what happens if we don't do it, oh, yeah. and then we get fined, and then they tell us what to do. Yeah, so, so this way we can actually say, this is what we want to do for us, what's mm -hmm. best for us, instead of what um, the EPA will tell us Just we have to do. Tell us. So if you do nothing and you stick your head in the sand, there are part of the permit. They can fine you $2,500 to thirty five fifty per day. Yeah. And then criminal penalties even done if you do something really bad and you don't pay attention and for non-compliance to be purposeful. Um, I don't think it's ever happened, but um, around here. But I mean, the, the close example, Swamp Scott Mass was just in 2015. They were they were fined sixty five thousand dollars for not doing their part of the permit. Sixty five thousand dollars, you know, that's a job in town. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a serious amount of money, yep. and um, and I'm it's also not it's also not like well, and you have ten years to pay no. for it. You gotta pay it right. then, right. and then everything you didn't right. do, you better do it now, because right. they're gonna come out, and then you all of a sudden you gotta, that's not just 65,000, they right. probably to pay like 300,000 right then and there right. to get this done. Yeah. So, you know, we don't wanna be those people. I don't, I don't wanna be the DPW director <laughs> that gets fined. <laughs> <be it>. <laughs> so, um, we'll be fined at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So Boston Water and Sewer, they paid a civil penalty of $235,000 to, um, basically part of the permits, storm our separation. And once again, they had to go forward and get the work done. And then the other one most recently was uh, Rhode Island DOT. They paid $315,000 for not implementing their stormwater plan. And now they're what's called a corridor consent order decree to fast track. So even though I make a big deal about the phosphorus control plan over a 10 year period, you know, also that 10 years can go to five years and you gotta, you know, what you're talking right. about time is money. Mm -hmm. So um, they force them to do it, it's a court order. If they don't, then the courts can go after the towns. It's a, it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. um, so anyways, Franklin has already led the fight and we fought the fight. And there's not really much more we can do. So that's why we're here now doing this. The cost of interaction is great and the cost of action. So to date, there's 14 communities in Massachusetts already established utility. Nearby examples would be Mills, Bellingham, Milton, Shrewsbury, and Westford. And um, you can see what years they were adopted and then the, the varying costs of how they did it. You know, everybody has a different fee structure and, and how they want to do it. So that's, uh, that's kind of it if we have any uh, discussion. Any more questions? I have several questions. One is, if your property is lower than the street, are you still going to get charged? Mm hmm Okay. Unfortunately. Is there something that we can use in the um, catch basins, like a filter or something, to capture some of this phosphorus that's going down? Well, what we try to do is, the first thing we try to do is get the, the, the 
suspended solids in the catch basin. And then we like try to channel into those four bays, those pitchers. That's the best filter, as I said before, the earth. So we try to get, anytime we recharge the water, the earth takes in the, the phosphorus and doesn't release it. So that's what we try to do. So if we don't use salt, are we better off than it, for the roads using sand? Or does that make a difference? It does make a difference. Uh, there's two things, and we had a discussion about this last time. Mm -hmm. um, so sand, give or take, costs 8 or $10 a yard. The problem with the sand is that's the stuff that we have to see on the road. That's stuff you have to sweep up all the time afterwards. It's not that effective for um, stone nice. ice removal safety. <clears throat> and that catches all the pollution. And we have to pick it up afterwards. That's all the, the street sweepers go. And it's very, very expensive. Then besides that, all that material that we get is considered hazardous waste. And we actually have to, it costs us, I think, what, $90 a ton to get rid of it? That's a lot. Is it $90 a ton to get rid of it, Gene? Mm -hmm. Give or take? Probably a little less, but never. Yeah. And it, most of it, unless you can find a landfill that they're all closing in town to use capping, most of it's taken out of state. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you're paying for, that's what it is, the transportation cost. So um, that's right. why in Franklin, you know, uh, we do, we salt, we don't use sand. Um, and the other reason we salt as much as we do is because of the expectations of the residents. They want the roads bare, right. and that's what we got to do. And that's a different pollution. That's, that's the salt that's going in our drinking water, you know, every spring. What so, about a, a liquid de-icer? Will that work? We do use liquid de-icing. You know, it, but is that costly? Um, it's once again, so at the right time, the right temperature, when you put it down, we do um, all our, I shouldn't say all of them, most of our sanders now, or salters, I should say, they have um, liquid programs on them. So they actually put the liquid out and it helps bind it the, at the time. But the temperature is going to be right to do it. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, it's it blow at temperature, it, it, it's useless. You're just wasting money yeah. throwing it out yeah. there. Anything you else? Know. You want to know them? Any other Your questions? Any more questions? <laughs> no more questions? So um, our next forum? So we'll have a ne our next forum will be March 21st, right? At 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah. 11, yeah. uh, 11 to 1 at the library. And Saturday. hopefully more people will come and we'll try to add all the comments we've got here. We'll work on our mm -hmm. list of things that the homeowners can do. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Best so, practices. Oh, we have a question. Can you tell us about the rain barrels? Oh, yeah. Oh, rain barrels. Kate, yes. Kate would love it then. <laughs> I can absolutely tell you about Kate the rain barrels. Kate is the barrel. expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we do a rain barrel program every spring and fall. There is one happening right now. Yeah. Um, and we partner with the Great American Rain Barrel Company. Um, they provide the rain barrels. You order your rain barrel through them. Uh -huh. The cost is $69 for a barrel, yeah. um, which is a discounted cost for residents. But the DPW also has a program for water conservation. Um, you can apply for a rain barrel rebate, which is $50 off mm -hmm. the cost of your rain barrel. Mm -hmm. So you get a rain barrel for $29. Um, mm -hmm. And you, the yeah, max okay. number of rebates you can get per household is two. So you can get two rain barrels at the cost yeah. of $29 each. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a great program. You order through the Great American Rain Barrel. Um, <coughs> our current program, I believe, is open until May 5th. And then the following week, you come to the DPW and you pick up your rain barrel and you bring it home and you can hook it up. Mm -hmm. and if you have multiple roofs, um, you know, downspouts, downspouts. Mm -hmm. um, is there someone who would say to you, this is the best place for a rain barrel? Any downspout is perfect. Okay. Um, I will tell you from experience, they fill up really, really fast. fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you'd think, oh, I have a 65 gallon rain barrel. That should get me, you know, a couple of storms to fill it up. Nope. No. I mean, if you have a good rainstorm, it can fill up within a matter of minutes, yep. depending yeah. on how large your roof is. Then what happens? Then <laughs> it goes back into your gutter and just goes down the way it normally would, mm -hmm. down the gutter. So you don't remove your gutter and it goes into the rain barrel and that's it. You basically hook up a, a diverter, um, which if there's overflow, it just goes back into your gutter and goes where it normally goes. Right. You can also hook up another rain barrel. Yes, because you can, the you rain can barrels them together. <laughs> the I, rain barrels come with these really cool hoses that yes. they can hook them together and they can fill up the next one and the yes. next one yes. and the next one. I personally had three at my house. I think my neighbors thought I was 
a little nutty. Um, but that's how I watered my lawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And now, now you could have to keep in mind it's not pressurized. So you ha I used to use a soaker hose, but I would just line it throughout my lawn. Mm -hmm. My husband loved it. Had to move it every time he mowed the lawn. <laughs> um, but our water bill was significantly lower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but mine. We, we do offer those programs every spring and fall. I use mine for my chicken coop. That's how I get the water chickens. So this time of year. So they work out pretty just much. To, really nice. Just to clarify the uh, money, so we get a discounted rate of $69, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yes. And if we give a $50 credit, it'd be 19, it'd be 19, 19 bucks. I'm sorry, yes. Yep. Did I say 29? Yes. They were 29, but now they're They 19. were 29 yes. at one point, but I just want to make yes. sure everybody's clear. Administration <laughs> fee. <Yeah. laughs> right, right. Right. You know, you can so basically. Rain barrels, everybody, yeah. right now. Yes, rain yes. barrels. So at our cost, you can basically order three or four of what would normally cost you one. You know, if you went out and bought it yourself. Well, you, so we the rebates program. are only good for two. Oh, two. Yes. Okay, so maximum Max two. Max two. Yes. Okay. You can get different colors. And we do track, so. You can get different colors. You can get the diverter yes. yep. on the on the um, American Rain Barrel site as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you, right. your, your best option would be to put one on one side and one on the other mm -hmm. side, probably. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, it depends on the size of your roof, how much you'll get, but mm -hmm. I mean, I had mine on my small little garage. and. Mm -hmm. It and where you, want to, really where you want to use the water. So, right. Yeah. So you, you could, for all intents and purposes, when the state slaps us with yet another water ban come May or June, that you could use that water to wash your car, which you're not allowed to do during water bans, correct? We need to and correct you. Actually, it's yeah. not a water ban. Water it's not a water conservation. No. I was going to say, people like to call it a ban. <laughs> no. no. But no. you nonetheless ask people for thousands of years the right way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so we're clear, you there is no ban. I just want to know. No, we didn't have a ban yeah. because of the plant codified. Right. Yes. right. So we, yeah. That was stated truly not. emergency. Right. 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 But the conservation plan, once again, yes. it's not the town of Franklin doing it. That's the state mandating what we want to do. Right. So. Right. And if you get a rain barrel, you'll probably be able to get a credit, maybe. Well, that's because yeah, we'll look at that. Yeah, because if we do, because we yeah. can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Any efforts to be conserving water will go a long way. All right. And one, so one more oh. thing, just because we're oh, talking about yeah. the rebate program we established a while ago. It's also you can get toilets. If you buy a low flow toilet, you get fifty dollars back. Yep. You buy a, um, a washer. Yes. A low flow, it's fifty dollars back, and you get two per household. So I mean, there's a hundred bucks right there, and that's part of our, you know, our water conservation plan that we do in town. Can you do all of them, or just two? No. A la carte. Can you get two rain barrels? Yeah. A low flow toilet. And At the same time. And two, uh, two, and two, <laughs> two credits. Toilets. Yeah, <laughs> two, toilets. Two, two, two washers. washers. Just <laughs> two, two rain barrels. barrels. Yeah. 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 Just, okay. Just want to make sure. Hey, I don't You know what? Some people like they're like, wow, this is great. Like, I know. We tell them about it. I don't know why I don't take advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So all you gotta do is bring the receipt down, your address. And yes. Yep. We'll, send you a check. We'll cut you, send you a check. That's yep. awesome. It's a great deal. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think we got to get more of that. I don't think people know, though. That's mm. the thing. I think we have it on. I know you have I it. Know. I know. We put it on the website. Yes. I know. We put it into the bills. We advertise it so often. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Bobby, I think you have a good point. It'll be part of our our uh, ne uh, our next um, education, yes. right? Absolutely. We'll like let people know what they yes. can do. We will add right? another we'll, slide we coming. We will add, <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will one more add slide. water conservation measures into another slide. I like demanding new slide slides. So everybody it's a good knows. thing. It's a good we thing, like thing right? We like making we slides. I know you do. Yes. I know you do. Well, <laughs> this is the process we go through yes. where we don't have every answer now, and we use these yeah. opportunities to yeah, try so to make things better. Thank so. you, everyone, for yes. coming and giving us all these great ideas. Thank you for anyone who's watching. Yeah. It'll be, we'll keep continuing and uh, collecting the information from everybody yes. and try to educate people Just come on saturday and meet ben next saturday. right right next next saturday, next saturday. Oh, yeah. the yeah. 21st. March 21st 21st okay yeah. all right thank you everyone thank you. thank you all right thank you thank you good job uh, yeah thank you yeah thank you. good job Bridget. thanks frank This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.